Welcome to Absolute Counter, episode 14. Rise of the Emulation Box. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Absolute Counter. This is Dark Screen. This is Magus and who else is with us today? Do you even retro, bro? What's up, guys? And this is Holy our shit, guest. Our first guest. Our first guest for this episode, the Retro Bro. And to this this episode is going to be a pretty exciting episode. But first, let's get to the Q and A's. And I have one little bit of news I do want to talk about personally. But let's get to the questions. Okay. Now, let's see. Coming up from our Discord, if you were to ask on our Discord, which I will post a link in the description below, you will find out that we have a small community built around our podcast and our channels. But Matt Wheaton had had two questions, and he asked, question number one, do you guys still collect video games, or are you mostly emulation from now on? And the second question he asked, what do you guys think of the retro mini consoles like SNES Mini, Genesis Mini, or... My upcoming favorite, the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. Now, when it comes for me in video games, I do like to collect them, but I don't like to collect them, collect them. I just like to pick them up and play them when I can. And I try, I used to emulate back when I was broke as hell, but I I want to like, <laughs> I want to hold. I promise I don't emulate because I'm broke. <laughs> yeah, but, but. Here's the thing, like, I could probably emulate a particular set of video games, which is trail the, the, the cross belt arc in the trail series, but I want to hold out thinking that maybe, maybe eventually we'll see a localization of those games because the, because the cross belt arc is basically the trails fans, personal mother three right there. And as for the, um, the retro mini consoles, well, each one is a different mixed bag, but I personally own a Super NES Mini, and I actually really like it the way it is. I have fun playing it. I would usually go in there and pop in occasionally Super Punch-Out, Super Metroid, a little bit of Castlevania, Super Castlevania, and uh, I did not know that there was going to be a TurboGrafx-16 Mini. I have to keep my eye on that. What yeah. about you guys? John, what about you? What about so you, John? So I believe it, well, this was like three questions there. The first one was, do any of us still collect? I think, was that the first one? Yeah. Collect or emulate? So, I, so the answer to that question is the majority of my cartridge, actually all of my cartridge gaming these days is emulation. In fact, everything except um, one particular console that um, – I can say it on your channel because I haven't put it out on my channel yet. I recently got a 3DO um, just because it's a pain in the ass to emulate that. So I do collect for the 3DO, but it's not, it, I, I don't collect for the sense of I want to have a bunch of 3DO games to say I have them. I want to, I want to buy them so I can play them. So that is really the only thing I use original hardware on. Everything else is pretty much strictly emulation. Although I do have, you know, I still have my original Nintendo. I have my original. You know, I have a, a Sega Genesis. I have a PlayStation. Like I have some of these consoles. I just don't utilize them because um, emulation is just too easy anymore for me. And it's come so far in the last. I mean, hell, even the last five years, emulation has come such a long way. You know, you're not you're not strictly stuck with a keyboard and mouse. You know, using Nesticle you know, on your, on your computer. Oh, fuck. That's so, <laughs> good that's point. Good school. point. So, so in that sense, I mean, I, and that's re the reason why I emulate is mostly out of necessity. Um, and, and like I said, it's, it's just come so long. I mean, it's, so, it's come so far. There's, there's so many ways now and that, you know, and that goes kind of towards the, my thoughts on the retro mini consoles. I made a video, not to toot my own horn, probably two years ago. And Magus, you'll probably remember this. Mm -hmm. I made a video about two years ago, and the video was titled, Is Emulation Becoming More Popular Than Collecting? This was before the mini consoles were even released. And I loved, I, I've gone back and since watched that video, and it was pretty, 
it's pretty interesting because I, I saw the rise of like how big emulation was getting, you know, how popular the retro pie had got, you know, then, then you have these mini consoles, Dude. then you have all these uh, other things like the, you know, the, the, I, the retro engine Sigma, the dream cave or the dream I, arcade. I, just, and shit I, like I that. remember emulation existing like way back in 1999, back when half life was still fresh and new. And it sucked so bad. <laughs> really because when i played yeah, like not I had half life a, not half life emulation wasn't very good back then well well when i uh when i played emulation back in the day on my friend's place uh that's when i first heard about it back in like back in the late 90s um i didn't encounter any issues with any of the games and he had stuff all the way up to the neo geo hardware and all that played pretty mm. solid so i don't know I didn't encounter That's weird cool. things like Mario running at like point zero 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 nine seven frames per second or anything like that. It played almost as perfectly as the console counterpart. But oh. well, the ironic thing about that is I remember watching a uh, I was probably I don't know a, that might have been in like eighth grade, eighth grade or ninth grade, <laughs> and we were in a computer class and we were watching somebody did a speed run on Super Mario three. And I'm like, how the fuck did he do that? And the guy's like, oh, he's probably using emulation. I'm like, what the fuck is that? He's like, oh, you can play those games on your computer. I'm like, how the hell do I do that? <laughs> he told me how to do it. And I went home and I got Nesticle. I don't remember what site I used. I think it was like like Pirate Bay or something to get the ROMs. All you right. know, I put the ROMs on a hard disk. And I'm like, eh, this isn't that great. I could use my keyboard, but it's pretty cool. I want to play Super Mario so, in my bedroom. Yeah, that was the novelty yeah. of it back in the day. So what about the sec second question about those retro mini consoles that's been on the rise lately? Um, I think it is a response to a market. Understandable. Uh, obviously, so what happened, yeah, what happened, I think, three years ago, you had this surge of you know, people wanting to play retro games. Um, you know, it was apparent if you went into any retro video game store and you saw a copy of Contra for 60 fucking dollars and you're like, what the hell's going on? And, you know, you had some, you had people who just wanted to play Mario or Contra. They'd go to these stores, buy a Nintendo and buy the game. So there was this huge demand for it. So I think that demand got so big to the point where companies like Nintendo and Sega said, hey, you know what? we could throw this out there and these people who just want to play, you know, Sonic, Mario, whatever, they're going to have something to buy and they're going to have something to use. And I, I think overall, I think it's, I think they were great. I think they're great for those people. And I also think it's great for, from like a collector standpoint, if you are a collector, well, if you're not, so if you're collecting for the reason of, I want to have a value, a valuable game collection. It's terrible because what this hat, what, what these minis did was it essentially decreased the value of all these games because people don't have to go buy, they don't have to go and buy the games now. They can just buy the mini. All right. Now, the so next, I think they're good. Yeah, I think they're good. Next set of questions comes from Black oh. Metal. Oh, right. Forgot, Magus. You need it. It's, sorry, guys. I'm drunk. Don't forget about him. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Okay. So, what was the first fucking question? Do you collect or emulate? emulate? Do I collect? I don't collect. I, I I buy physical games for convenience. I trade them in for convenience. I buy mostly digital games, and I do emulate. So, yeah. See, I'm that's that funny guy. because I actually buy digital for convenience. I I hate Same buying here. physical games. Same here, man. <laughs> like I only well, have. Well, here's why I buy. I, I have a reason though. I, I think I've told you this before, John. I have shitty internet to download like a 20 gig game. I only mm. have two so that's physical why I buy games. A physical game. I only have two physical games on the Switch. Everything else is digital. Those being Mario Odyssey but and do, Ring Fit Adventure. That's it. But to be fair, though, I, I did buy Pokemon Digital, the new one, and I did buy Luigi's uh, Mansion Digital. All right, so. I, so what do you think about those mini consoles? Not for me. Not I have to buy a retro pie, but. All right. Now, ne I, sorry. Now, now, next set of questions. I would buy a retro pie. Next set of questions come from Black Metal Gamer. He says, what is the first 2020 game you look forward to playing to playing and buying day one? Thoughts on Jedi Fallen Order of Dark Screen played it yet? I haven't played it, but I've heard surprisingly good things about it. Which caught me off guard because Star Wars has been going down to down uh, has 
has been going down a downward slope, but Jedi Fallen Order, as well as the Mandalorian mm-hmm. series that's premiering Disney Plus, has been getting some good feedback. And what's really hilarious to me about Jedi Fallen Order, the main character in that game, he's played by an actor who, just like Mark Hamill, has also has a history of playing the Joker. So we got oh, two Jokers that are Jedi Knights. Yeah, he plays. Um, he's he's from the Gotham TV show, which I've been watching actually, and I actually enjoy his performance as Jerome. Um, I'm only on season three right now, so uh, I I need some catching up to do, uh, obviously. But he wasn't too bad uh, as a potential Joker. So, but yeah, I've heard this game has been compared to fucking Sekiro in terms of gameplay and shit. So. I will pick up the game, but it's probably going to be a price drop. And that's a good thing because Respawn Entertainment is probably the best developers that they have on the EA's wing. Now, as for a game I'm looking forward to 2020, uh, I don't know what's coming out in January or February. It might be Rune Factory or whatever, but I think the earliest game I have in mind is Doom Eternal. I am excited for that game, obviously, because I've been a I've been a hardcore Doom fan since I was like seven or eight years old when I was a little kid. So and I loved I loved the twenty sixteen reboot. That was in my top five back in the day. Oh yeah. So that John, what that might be it. Retro um, Boom. Yeah, man, you know, um, I think Ori comes out early in the year. I think that comes out in February, so I'm excited for that. That's probably the only... Ori? Yeah, Ori 2 is coming out. Um, Wisp, Willow, Wisp, or whatever it's called. Uh, have, have, have you guys played the first one? Yeah, I have. It's good. I have. Yeah, it. It's, good. It, oh, it's amazing, man. Um, honestly, it's the best... You know, Metro, there's, there's Metroidvania is a, a really an overdone series at this point or style of game. I think, that especially is when it true. comes to indie devs. That is. But so the true. thing about the thing about this game is it's the story that it's the story that'll grab you. Um, you know, the the style of gameplay is almost secondary because it could it could have it could be just a base platformer and you'd want to progress to the next level just to see what happens in the story. And the story is so well done. Um, it's very artistic. They don't need to talk a lot in the game to portray, you know, the, to get the story across, which is amazing. when any game can do that. That's that's amazing to me. Um, it takes a lot of talent to do that. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that one. Um, Doom, I'm I'm excited about uh, mostly because I'm, unlike you guys, I actually didn't like the the Doom 2016. Uh, uh, I thought I it, never played it. Yeah, I know. And you know what? I know that's a seriously unpopular opinion. Fuck but yeah, I just didn't it is. get into it, man. I, 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 I put like six hours into it, and I'm like, I don't know. It, 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 number one, the platforming, I hated it. Um, two, it just felt like, you know, I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe it was just because I loved the first original Doom so much. It still kept yeah, that fucking feel and charm. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't know, man. I mean, like it, it did, but it didn't for me though. That's the thing. I, I don't know, man. Did you I, play? Just, I, I am excited for Eternal though. All right. So that's gonna be weird. Just, just uh, I'm, hopefully, like I'm, I'm pretty sure that if you didn't like Doom 2016, then you're not gonna like Doom Eternal. Because Doom Eternal seems well, to I hear be focusing some of the platforming elements out of it though. No, it seems Doom Eternal is doubling down on those platforming elements because the character uh, has really? like a, the game. The character <laughs> looks like. That, he, he looks like he has a grappling hook and shit. He's going to be moving all over the fucking place. Well, well, I'm probably the only person who doesn't care about Doom Eternal. In this all right, cat, so, so what's the first 2020 game you're going to look forward to playing? I'm assuming it's going to be the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Yeah, you knew it. That's predictable for me. I'm too per- fucking predictable. Yeah, it's the Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's the one I want the most. All right, and none yeah. of us, none of us has played Jedi Fallen Order. We can move on to the next two questions. If yeah, you, I haven't played it. I, I hear the okay. same sentiments as pretty much what you said. The I, last I two set of questions also come that. from Black Mail Gamer, but these are actually pretty good questions. If you could have a prequel to any RPG game, what would you choose? And what other anime would you like to see uh, Ryu got Gotoku cover since they also did for the North Star? If you don't know what you, what, what he's talking about, is that Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise is basically Yakuza 
it's visiting a star, but it plays like the Yakuza games. He's asking, what kind of anime or possibly manga would you like to see that in, in that style? I, um, I got something to say on this. John, I know you don't play a lot of RPGs, if any, and then I know you're not into anime, correct? Absolutely correct. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll answer it first i guess um what prequel to uh rpg um i'd like to see that xeno those earlier xeno gears episodes in xeno gears that they briefly mentioned well they don't briefly mention but they mentioned xeno gears is episode five so i'd like to see those and then for another anime from that team you know berserk would be a good one yes I can see them doing Berserk. Berserk would be pretty hype. Um, he'll yeah. be just as violent as Fist of the North Star, too. Uh, let's see. Yeah, if not more. Okay. Uh, what's a what's what, what will be an anime I would like to see the RGGS studio adapt from? Uh, I don't want to say Neguma again because I've answered that question a bajillion times before a couple episodes ago. Maybe JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, specifically Part 4. Um, yeah, that might be something I'd probably just go uh, answer by default because um, I'm thinking of, okay, something that you could do action-based, but it will be spent in a small world, small town, and it could be something that would justify the action. I'm like, okay, maybe JoJo. Yeah, maybe something like that. That would be okay. kind of fun. Um, let's see. Now, the, so those are his last two questions, right? Well, I haven't answered. I haven't answered the first part. The prequel to any RPG game. Um, I recently finished Trails in the Sky, which is f- fucking amazing. And I'm in the middle of the second chap, uh, uh, the second game, which is called SC or second chapter. And this game is fucking phenomenal. I wouldn't mind seeing a prequel of the game uh, of Trails in the Sky that takes place during the 100 Days War, and your your focus oh, and, yeah. and the protagonist is Estelle's father, Cassius Bright. I wouldn't mind seeing a game like that. Okay. And then maybe it doesn't take place ex- all the time during 100 Days Wars. Maybe it could l- uh, progress a little bit when he. You know, decides to become a bracer and all that stuff, and then kind of leads into um, to the events of the first game. Uh, that would make a magnificent prequel because in the first game, the first game has you has the main characters like learn a bit about the world they're exploring and their jobs as bracers, but they also learn more and more about their father about how he was this great hero of the country uh, that they were in. Yeah. And you've learned some very yeah. interesting stuff about the guy. And I wouldn't mind seeing a prequel that just fully delves deep into that. Because from what I've heard, yeah, Cassius yeah. Bright sounds like a real badass. That sounds like a that sounds like a good sequel. Is there a, are there any more questions though? I don't think I so. I think <laughs> What the fuck was that? Whoa. John, he went robot. He didn't just go robot. He sounded like a fucking... He sounded like Sinistar. <laughs> How's that sound in my back? Okay, you're yeah, back. You're back. Oh, okay. You did sound like Sinistar. <laughs> Dude, you sound... I asked... Oh. Uh, <laughs> Dude, it wasn't just... It wasn't just a, a robotic Steve voice. Retro, you bro. sounded very <laughs> demonic and creepy. And it, it's... it. Wow. Okay. When... <laughs> I'm not editing this. When you hear that episode, you'll see what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> I was caught completely. Uh, I can't wait, man. Is it gonna be Cinebro? <laughs> <laughs> okay, Cinebro. Okay. It had to be. It had to, it, and of course, it was the black metal gamer question. Okay. Know, so. <laughs> as what a fucking surprise that was. As for gaming, God damn it, Jason and the Satanism. <laughs> as for gaming news, I don't have much to say except. Um, since we have, since we haven't recorded an episode in a long in a while, in a couple of weeks actually, um, some news came up. A new character was announced for Street Fighter V. Magus, can you guess who that is? Oh no shit! Yeah, Gil. It's Gil. 
the final boss from thir- from the Street Fighter 3 games. He is announced as a character and that blew me the hell away. Which is amazing mm. cuz I I'm a huge mark for the Street Fighter 3 games, especially Third Strike, and I actually think Gil was a much more intimidating final boss than Bison for a but lot of reasons. We also know you're not a mark for Street Fighter 5. You have had a love-hate relationship. With I do game. have a love-hate. Love. Like, the gameplay is fine. They finally gave me characters I've been asking for since Street Fighter 4, like Karen and Rainbow Mika and Alex, but... Street Fighter Five had such a sloppy launch that it just leaves a bad taste in my mouth, but they still yeah. continue to improve yeah. it, and I'm even tempted to pick up the Championship Edition upgrade that's coming out soon. And yes, I, I like Gil as a final boss because he was such an asshole in that game. Like Every hit had a high hit stun yeah. rate. He had the resurrection. He was, he was much more intimidating than Bison ever was. And I wouldn't, and John, wh- I wouldn't mind. Uh, I hope. Go ahead, Dark I I hope they like update the arcade mode where he becomes the final boss in the Street Fighter Three routes, because that would be amazing. Yeah, that would be dope. Yeah. Hey, John. So, what are your thoughts on Street Fighter Five? Because I know you're you're a fighting. I feel, guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got Street Fighter Five three years ago. It's been a while. Uh, played a little bit of it. It would, didn't. I'm trying to think that it have the arcade part yet. Um, I got bored with it very fast. I didn't feel like it had a lot to offer. Um, so I actually wound up. In fact, I don't know if I still have it. I might have either sold it or traded it in. I think I might have traded it in with a bunch of games. Um, but having you know, having here that some other news. You know that they finally added some modes back into it. I might snag. I might snag it one of these days. So here's my question though: Do I have to go get like? Is there like a new like version I have to get? Because there's been so much added content to it. Yeah. Or will it I, all just automatically I, download? I, I, believe, I have to get like a certain version. I, I believe it's coming the out. Feb- yeah, the championship edition is coming out February. It's probably your best best to just repick up that game that way. Okay. That's probably what I'll do then. Because I'm I'm thinking about getting that yeah, because all the content. Because I didn't I didn't I didn't get all the season one content. I didn't get those stuff that came out this year. Basically, the new characters, uh, Roxy, Honda, and that character from Final Fight. And it's also coming with all the costumes and stuff. And I'm like, okay, you know, what? I might just pick it up that way. Because Street Fighter Five isn't a terrible game, but it. it, it it just does some things. Mechanically, that, it's a great game. Mechanically, yes. But yeah. You know, it's con- a great fighter, but it, there's just so much lack. Like, there was so much it didn't have. I felt but, like I got ripped but, off. Man. Yeah, exactly. Which is why fighting game developers just don't get it. Which is why I'm nervous about the new Guilty Gear game that's coming out. <laughs> The new Guilty Gear game seems like it's nerfing the hell out of all the fun shit that made the Guilty Gear game so special and unique. And... I know you're not a big fan of this YouTuber, but Maximilian Dude did a did a video about Guilty Gear Strife, yeah. which is what the new one's called, and I agree with him on his points. Like when especially when it comes to trying to like appeal to newer audiences when it comes to fighting games, the ones who don't play fighting games a whole lot, you do it by not nerfing your game because doing that doesn't well first off, it doesn't scare off the uh the tournament players because they're already skilled. They're already skilled. They're no. They're they're gonna know how to play the game and master it and beat up those new guys you want to get so badly. But like, in order to get a newer audience, you don't fucking dumb down your game. You just add more content. You just add more content that would keep them interested. That would justify a sixty dollar price tag. You know what? The next episode that I have planned for Absolute Counter is going to be the Game of the Year episode. Okay, that, that, something I was going to yeah, discuss. Yeah, we with, talked about that. Yeah, something I was going to discuss with Magus, but I guess we'll give you a little insight. But here's a spoiler: my fighting game pick. This is going to be a very controversial topic for some fighting game fans, but Smash Ultimate is going to be my personal pick because that game did everything that- I wish most fighting games would fucking do, and that is bring it, bring it with a lot of content, bring it with so much life. Oh my 
God, I spend so much time in Smash Ultimate. Yeah, how I, many how many characters? How many characters do you get right off over, the bat? With, with, over seventy. I used yeah. to. That's insane, dude. And I used to hate the Smash. I used to hate Smash Brothers, but man, did Ultimate knock it out of the ballpark with everything. Even if they didn't have all the DLC or shit, I was, still would have been satisfied. But got, yeah, that's gonna be that's to gonna be on my game of the year list. And I wish more fighting games. I wish more fighting game developers like did that because Guilty Gear Strive it looks great, visually looks beautiful, but I don't like how they're revealing their roster because it's just characters fr from the original Guilty Gear game that have already existed in Exer, which is Soul, well, Kai, Chip Zanov, Potemkin, Faust, and here I am thinking okay, where's some new characters? Where's some characters that were in X2 but were neglected in Exer? Where's Bridget, Testament, Zappa, Order Soul, Aba? Where are those fucking characters okay jesus God damn christ it's, a dark stream rap rant today. It, it's <laughs> like i want guilty gear strike to take be... the back seat bro Here's i know me. i took a back seat for today <laughs> holy shit i <laughs> love raging i love the guilty gear games man x2 was like the first ever playstation 2 game i ever played ever since i bought one with my own fucking lawnmower money and i would love to, and I want Strive to be fucking perfect because it's got the visuals down. If they could just fucking make their gameplay the way it used to be, but a little bit better, all not right. dumbed down, it would be like the third strike of Guilty Gear games. That's all they need to fucking do. There you go. Dark okay. Streams rap for the night. I don't have one because I'm perfectly happy with shit. <sighs> <laughs> Yeah, as you can but, see, I get a little yeah. more energetic when I have one too many to drink. We should probably record more around this time, Magus. Yeah, maybe so, but um, but I I will say this though. I I think just for you, John, just to let you know real quick. Yeah. You know, the, you've heard of what the arcade modes in Street Fighter Five entail, because when people were asking for arcade modes, they didn't just give you one arcade mode. No shit. No, they gave you Street Fighter One arcade mode. Street Fighter 2 arcade mode. Street Fighter Alpha arcade mode. Oh, wow. Street Fighter 3 arcade mode. Yeah, huh? Four and five. And here, four. And it's and it, it, it's, it's kind of weird because it, it, they also have like characters set specifically for each game. So, for example, Yurian won't be in the Street Fighters 1 to an Alpha arcade mode. He'll be in 3 and 5. But... What I like about the arcade modes in Street Fighter 3 is that they try to thematically emulate each of the Street Fighter arcade games with the music and everything. For example, um, if you play uh, Street Fighter 2, you remember the character select theme of that game vividly, right? You know, do 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 do. They'll try to come up with like a remix version of that during the character select screen, all the themes and all that shit. So yeah, it's pretty fucking cool. So yeah, if you so so in a victory results screen, it will actually play dun, 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 and you know all that shit. That's that's why that that's why I do like the arcade modes in Street Fighter Five a lot. Espe especially what they did with Street Fighter Three, they actually remember the Third Strike theme from Infinite a lot. Well, Ooh. well now we really know Dark Streams toasted because he's singing Street Fighter Six. Uh, two things. Pre so. Prepare for the battle. Prepare <laughs> for the war. I just, I just, I just beat, I just beat Street Fighter Two as we're as we're chatting. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Which took, one? Uh, the one on Genesis. They oh. are the champion one, edition. Uh, new, yeah, new challengers. Oh, oh, new uh, challengers. So that's super. Okay. Oh man. Yeah, Super Street Fighter Two. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's really toasted. <laughs> so okay. Yo, yo, uh, man, B Bison's a bitch, man. I forgot how hard that dude was. Yeah, dude. Holy man. shit! Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. You just gotta jump all over the screen and just kick. I don't <laughs> want huh? Chun Li. Okay, so I will say this: it's like you can predict your next move, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's frustrating, man. Dude, dude, there's a video. Yeah. There's a video on YouTube by the username of the he goes by the name Desk, all lowercase D E S K. Um, he's a great YouTuber if you like wanna look at fighting game combos and stuff. He's like the Harlem Grove Chatters of fighting games, because well, he did a video recently proving that the AI in the Street Fighter games are actually fucking cheating 
on you, dude. It's it's crazy. <laughs> Doesn't surprise me, man. Yeah, um, I, well, it's an arcade game. Too. Yeah, but, That's yeah. They're designed to eat your yeah. cards as well. Yeah, well, arcade game. Or, dude, arcade versions of games are the worst. I, under, they're almost I, I understand why they did. They're that, literally but, almost unbeatable. I understand why they did that, but holy shit! Oh, because because this whole like time I was playing. You, the whole time you probably losing the AI because you think you're weak. It's like no, it's because the AI was bullshit. <laughs> because they. Well, I was playing NBA Jam on Mame, the arcade port. I was playing that on my one stream uh, when I streamed a couple nights ago, and I was getting like, I was getting my ass kicked. And uh, I went. It was and actually I didn't get beat too bad, but I got beat. I, I'm playing. It, I'm like, I don't remember this game being this hard. And then I went. And I played the Genesis version. And it was so much easier. I'm like, okay, so they just made it harder so it could take my quarters, essentially, you know, is what yeah. they did. You know what was interesting fighting game-wise on one of your streams, John? Remember that night when you showed me the PlayStation capabilities on the pipe? And you ha- you were running Tekken 3. Oh, I was playing, I was playing Tekken, yeah. And then you went to Bloody Roar, and it was slower. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So uh, The original, the first Bloody Roar wasn't a very good game. Hold on. What did you have to say, John? I said the first Bloody Roar, I don't think was very good. I mean, it was that, that game's dated. Yeah. All of them are the actually. Ah, who knows? I I remember playing uh, a lot of Primal Fury, and even at the time, I thought the game was like a three out of five. But anyways, um, the video games we played this week, um, other than the two Trails games I played, which are Trails in the Sky and Trails of Cold Steel. Uh, I've, I've, uh, picked up a copy of, um, Raging Loop, which is a visual novel. Oh. And this game is actually pretty fun or, well, it's a visual novel. And when I ask our visual, our visual novels, video games, there's actually a couple people in the comment section that said, no, they aren't, but whatever. Fine. Fuck it. Who gives oh, a shit? Fuck sake. But anyways, I <laughs> Raging Loop was pretty hold fun. Hold on, John. Uh, uh, John. Hold on. I want to ask John a question. Do you? I don't. I don't know how much you know about visual novels, but do you think they're games? Are they games or are they video games? Video, video games. games. Yes. <sighs> and I, we're talking pure visual novel, not something that's like added in as an element, a la Blaze Blue or Neptunia or whatever, like. The only things you Think do Snatcher, is Snatcher, John. No, not even that. I mean, because or... Snatcher still had mini Your games. Snatcher's in it. a visual novel, dude. It is a vir- visual novel. But it still had like uh, mini game elements it's... to it. You know, there was still rail shooter stuff in it. I'm talking know, strictly text. Are... Strictly text, and the only things that the 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 only freedoms you have are like dialogue still... choices. Yeah, but you still make choices, though. This, I think that I think that's what makes it a game. I'll take because that as choices, a yes. I think because I think because if your choices determine an outcome, then yes, it's a game. Okay, I agree. Yeah, that's. I think that's that was only, like my argument. Only reason why it makes well, it a game. Anyways, that, me... that was my arguments towards like that piece of shit, Florence. Oh fuck that, that game. game! Jesus fucking titty <laughs> dancing Christ! Do you remember me talking bitching about that game, John? <laughs> Which one, Florence? Florence. Mm, probably i don't know you've gone on so many rants i I they just kind of get merged into one at this point i vividly remember (laughs) it but anyways back to raging loop which is like on the switch for 30 bucks um i picked that game up last week and it it's it's a pretty fun visual novel where you play as a dude who gets who who crashes his motorcycle into this village and this village has some strange customs and shit. And to, to sum it up as briefly as possible, I don't know if you guys are familiar with, like, the card game Werewolf or Mafia. Like, no. Oh, I am, yeah. Okay. Dude, the game's tutorial literally tells you that. The beginning of the game, and it has a tutorial, and I'm going to get to the funny part later on, where they say, oh, yeah, in this game, you're going to make decisions, and you're also going to unlock certain keys that will allow you to unlock choices later uh, from earlier parts of the game, blah, blah, blah. Also, there's going to be a certain point in the game where you're not allowed to broadcast or stream whatsoever for spoiler reasons. Yeah, they actually had like a little weird streaming disclaimer warning or something, but whatever. Didn't pretend to me. I had no plans to stream the game anyways. 
So what's what's interesting about that game? It's basically Werewolf meets that Bill Murray film Groundhog Day. Because I'm going to spoil huh, it. Which is a phenomenal movie. Yeah. Which yeah, that's a fucking great movie. I'm going to spoil it a little bit. The main character actually get, goes through that deja vu groundhog loop. And that's what you have to do in order to unlock, unlock certain keys that will allow you to unlock dialogue choices that were locked out in previous playthroughs. And I have a really funny example. There's like one point in the game. Hey, where, hey, I want to buy that game. I was curious about it. Yeah. So watch it. It, it it's well okay okay well i'm gonna try to be uh i'm gonna try to be as vague as possible but i wanted to describe this because this shit was hilarious to me but there was one point okay. in the game where you get pulled over by a cop and then you have some dialogue choices that result in you fucking dying anyways but you you unlock keys because apparently making the bad choice and getting you killed will actually unlock other paths in the game so i did that twice with two different dialogue choices which opens up a dialogue choice in that same area and the character fucking loses his mind breaks the fourth wall and because he goes completely insane the cop shoots him in the fucking face and that unlocks a dialogue choice from an earlier point in the game. So, yeah. That, that sounds like a happy game. Uh, oh, dude. The, yeah, the game is fucking... It's fucking weird and bizarre, but I enjoy it so far because it's combining... It's combining one of my favorite card mini games, but the rate, but the whole resetting the timeline thing reminds me of some of the Kochiro Uchikoshi games that exist like the zero escape games as well as yeah as well as i the somnium files which came out this year uh, a bit so yeah this game has almost everything i love i want in what? visual novels so and, and yeah I, I i'm in, i'm enjoying the time i'm spending on that game um that's good the other thing i was also playing uh i was actually streaming this earlier is the outer worlds which is made by yeah. obsidian entertainment and it was headlined by the guys who created Fallout New Vegas as well as Fallouts 1 and 2. The game so far isn't a bug ridden mess. I've put about three hours in. Wow. And you said it is or it isn't? Isn't. And here's the thing. Oh, it, okay. It looks like a Bethesda game, but I believe it's ran on the Unreal 4 engine, which proves that Bethesda's huh. shitty fucking engine is fucking obsolete <laughs> and needs to be deleted from existence because i because i heard those fuckers want to use it for elder scrolls 6 in their stupid starfield game and after the disaster fest that was fallout 76 which by the way it continues to be a disaster fest with their stupid hundred dollar annual season pass but i played this game a little bit and you know it's really fun and it's it, it's very streamlined in how you level up in that game because they have like they have like set of tabs when you put skills in like if I want to like increase my dialogue I don't have to increase dark charm. Screen. I hate to cut you off what now but we're, we are on a time frame homie I know a, we, we are on a Yes, I do you know you do know. So <laughs> I well, do I do know you know, so <laughs> Well shit, dude. So but I know, I know. I'm all right, all right, all right know. fine. Well, well, what, what have you been playing, John? Yeah, what games have you played this week or any or anything? Just say anything. Yeah. Well, um Call of Duty, man. It's funny because I literally well, first of all, I bought the game for multiplayer. Um, Anthony, Anthony knows my, I I've beaten, I've played like two modern games this year. One of those yeah. was bloodstained, which I loved absolutely amazing. Uh, and then I kind of didn't really play anything new for a while and, uh, just got call of duty, the new one for the online play the campaign, the campaign. I mean, it's a call of duty game, nothing, nothing to write home about, but the online is okay. Hold on. It, let it's me, awesome, man. Let I me really get, like it. Let me get this straight. You hate Doom 2016, but you would play Call of Duty. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake, you just on you. <laughs> if, if, um, if Doom 2016 had a good online multiplayer, I'd probably enjoy it. He's got you there. Even you told me once the multiplayer sucked on it. Fair enough. 
I honestly, no, but um, I just want to let you know, I, nobody plays Doom for the multiplayer. Of course not. I I'm gonna say this real quick for me. Mine's real easy. I just been playing the Hell of the Witcher Three. I've talked about that game for years. The end. <laughs> oh well, well, okay. I just want to know if you've gotten to that one mission yet. What mission? Uh, it's in Skelligard. I know that much. Are you in Skellige? Not well, not yet. But I've I've done tons of side quests, and I've done some okay. things like okay. For example, you know that certain person that I had a fun time with, and then I murdered last time in my first playthrough. Yeah, I talked to that person this time, and it went well. Okay, oh. that's good. <laughs> okay, because there's one question I want to ask, but I don't want to. I don't want to get into details yet because, uh, oh boy, this was a fun little side mission. But I'll wait until you get to Skellige. You know what I'm talking about. Okay, so now, is it the? Does it involve an oven? Oh my god! Yes, it does. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, I haven't gotten. I gotten into my last playthrough, which was shitty, but in this one, I haven't gotten into it yet. I haven't really gone to Skellige yet. I've okay. mostly stayed in Novigrad, and I've done side quests. I, I, I gotta ask: in the last playthrough, did did you burn the baby? I prevented it from being burned. Well, that was that was fake. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, you know what I mean, motherfucker. Okay, whatever. I man. saved the kid. Okay, you did. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, that, I just remember that mission being <laughs> hilarious. Like, what the fuck are you talking about, Bernie Davies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, man, The Witcher Three is fucking phenomenal with side missions i'll tell you that much let's let, let, let's pause for this uh let's pause for this uh sponsor break of planned parenthood <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> oh fuck oh shit uh, okay gotta... now we can move on to our topic of choice at least he's not jason <laughs> okay so i heard well, very vaguely, because I tried to get, I tried to talk to fucking Larry Bundy on Facebook about this Guru Larry, and I want to know because I was told that the retro gaming market bubble is finally bursting, and thank God, because I don't want to find a copy of Robotic Alchemic Drive for fucking two hundred dollars. <sighs> I, you know, I really don't know that, but I know who would know that. That's why he's on the show today. John knows this better than most people. Do you think it's busting, Don? I think we are in the midst. Um, so what has happened, especially with cartridge-based stuff, uh, shit, even N64 stuff, uh, has come down a lot. So you remember how earlier and I mentioned in the podcast, we were saying $60 Contras. Yeah. Um, $30 Super Mario 3s, which is probably the most common Nintendo game you'll ever find. Uh, Super Mario 3 right now, if you're lucky, I've got three copies in my house. If I'm lucky, I could sell them on eBay for nine bucks. Um, if I'm really lucky, I could get 12 for them. So I think what happened is, and, and again, this really kind of ties in with emulation, is a lot of these, a lot of these casuals who kind of swelled the market They've, they're, they're finding ways to play these games without going the original hardware route. Not too many people have old fucking CRT TV sitting in their house. You know what I mean? So if people are happy playing Super Mario 3 on their phone for the most part. You give them a yeah. mini console, they're ecstatic. Or, you know? or, or better yet, man, that, so. that, that game is on the Switch on via their little <laughs> pseudo Netflix service system, the, the, the NES Classic. What what the fuck was it called specifically on on the Switch? The NES, whatever. Um, it's just the NES program. Yeah, I'm not sure what it's called. Yeah, I don't. That I don't and use the it. Super NES. And honestly, like as a dude who plays old video games, and the funny thing is, earlier today, um, I booted up. For some reason, I was in the mood to play Rumble Roses for the PlayStation Two, <laughs> because holy fuck, yeah. <laughs> Because, because that's the because that's the only wrestling game I own right now. Because and and I'm in the mood to fucking hunt down and pick up all the earlier WWE SmackDown games that came out uh, on that console. But I play that shit on my HD TV, which was blurry as hell, but it didn't bother me all that much. 
Because, you know, I'm a guy who likes the retro game and I will play it no matter what the platform or what kind of TV. I don't know if I want to play on a CRT TV. I remember staring at CRT TVs for a long time and they used to give me migraines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make your head, you make your. I remember your eyes would start feeling real sandy too. I don't know if you guys I, remember that feeling. You yeah, like turn your head I, away exactly. from the TV and feel like there's sandpaper in your eyeballs. <laughs> I have something to tell you guys that was crazy. All I right. never told you guys this. Either one of you. When I had my Nintendo in my room as a kid, I had a TV in there, right? Yeah. But I played NES games on a black and white TV. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, for years I did, until I got my Genesis and got a color TV. But yeah, for years I played NES. Games Why don't you put that in your living room or something, man? <laughs> I wouldn't have done because that. Then I, because then, because I chose no color over having to fight for the TV. Yeah, I feel you on that. Yeah, which you know what though? Thinking about it was kind of neat though, playing like Ducktales in black and white. I'll, I'll say that. I'll say this going back to the original question about the bubble is you're so aside those com those common games you're going to see come down. I mean, I don't think it'll ever get to the point where you're, you know, getting little Samson for 20 bucks, because I think at this point there is a big enough collector market out there, kind of like how there is with comics to where mm-hmm. you're always going to have that sort of you know, base price because, you know, something like little Samson is more rare than Super Mario. Therefore, it's always going to be a, a more expensive game. Uh, so I think what will happen is you'll have the the super common games. You know, the even the more popular common games are going to come back down, you know, five, ten, fifteen dollar price range. And they're just kind of stay there, you know, unless Nintendo or Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo goes the route of like Atari or goes the ways of Atari, which, you know, I'm a little too young, but probably in the mid to late nineties, you know, Atari 2600 stuff was expensive. It was really I remember expensive. that. Yeah. Um, and now, I mean, you can get Atari games for 50 cents to a dollar, you know, even at game stores. So I don't know if it'll ever get to that point, but I think because of emulation, I think you're starting to see this shit kind of start to relax a little bit. That is yeah, emulation. It, it was back. Emulation. Um, certain uh, companies have been around since the 80s and 90s, still alive to this day, releasing their games digitally on a bunch of platforms from Steam to Switch. Like, mm-hmm. like Magus, you said you bought uh, Garrow Mark of the Wolves for like four bucks on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I picked yeah, that, I yeah. picked that game up like a long time ago for fifteen dollars on the PS4. I'm like, I just want to play Garrow Mark of the Wolves. Now I did I did get that shit emulated uh before because you know if you're gonna emulate something, emulate something that you your platform you're never gonna own, which is an arcade cabinet. You know. That seems like a great yeah. thing to emulate because, look at all look at all the Neo Geo games on it, PS4 and uh but now, and, but, and now Switch. but now, but now, SNK is realizing, oh yeah, we could just put our old classic Neo Geo stuff on there, blah blah blah. I'm like, and oh. they run perfect. Yeah, they run. Yeah, they run great. Um, that being. Oh, by the way, John, you never played ba- Garu, huh? No, I have not. Mark of the Wolves. You, is... you like fighting games? Do I like what? You like you like you like some of the SNK fighting games, though, right? I love all of them, dude. Oh wow! Okay. And you and you skipped you out on Garu. Mark of the Wolves. That's you gotta not, play that one. That's that's like yeah. the it's basically it's the latest entry of the Fatal Fury franchise. It's where Rock Howard got yeah, his introduction. It's Fatal Fury Four, basically. And you know what? I have a hard time with the earlier Fatal Furies games because I didn't like that background shit those games did. But uh, uh you, I think you did Garou. Yeah, Garou is pretty fun. Um, they they have some great characters in there like Taizak, Hartaro, Bon Jenny. I mentioned Rock Howard before. It's basically kind of their third strike because it takes place like seven or nine years after the events of Real Bout, ba- Real Bout Fatal Fury, and it's like a new generation character. So the only returning character is Terry Bogard, and even he has like a drastic yeah. redesign. Where he has like this brown jacket and shorter hair, which I actually dig that design a lot. But you also have Rock Howard, who has a play style that combines both Terry and Geese's. You have, uh, well, 
his Japanese name is Rocco uh, Marco Rodriguez, but they thought that name was just not cool enough in America, so that's why they called him Kushnu Butt with two T's. They literally call him Butt, and he's the Kyo- oh, shit. and he's the Kyokugen practitioner. It- the guy well, who fights in it's the, a good game and it's a great weird name. Oh yeah, I I, I I occasionally play it's a little bit of fun. But I I, I, would... I want to ask John something real quick though. So you mentioned earlier the three DO, right? That you purchased. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So is that one of the downsides, like you know, you know, three DO emulation? We know Saturn emulation is still difficult to some degrees. Is that really one of the downsides of emulation you think right now there's there's quite a i mean there's quite a few consoles that are still that still haven't really done it well and a, a lot of the problem was that was because of the way the console is developed um you look at this, this, this so one of the reasons why the saturn has a hard emulate it's hard to emulate is because of the way they um i'm gonna butcher this but the way they like pretty much copy rip copy wrote their system so they had to the, the the way they the way they had the hardware read the disc is not something that's easily emulated. At least it's kind of like how I understand it. I'm probably doing a terrible job of explaining how it works because I don't really even know quite like how it works. I mean, because that console's fucking, you know what? Almost thirty, actually. Well, yeah, twenty five years, years old. So I mean, and, and they still haven't, you know found a good solid way to emulate like we have some of the some of the cartridge based stuff um when it comes to that like i said and i had to kind of ask you a question as well magus i'd love to hear your opinion as well dark scream is how do you feel about people who collect for stuff okay so not not so much collect but how do you feel about those people who they they don't want to play emulation because they only want to play original hardware because they they feel that's the best way to experience the game. Like, how do you guys feel about that? Oh boy, I got a lot to say, but Dark can take this one first. Uh, it's just people who have who who are trying to build a fucking moral platform for themselves, um, in order to justify them spending hundreds and hundreds of dollars on shit they don't really need to. Uh, here's the thing. I'll play anything uh, anywhere with any controller. I've played Neo Geo fighting games strictly on a fucking keyboard. And I was still able to do combos pretty solidly on that thing. So I'll, I'll play anywhere. Fuck? Yeah. Ex- yeah. <laughs> you know, when you map, when you map. Okay. Yeah. Uh, like when you map your controllers to emulate the Neo Geo board, ASDF, that's your ABCDs on Neo Geo. And. Yeah, it's really not that hard to do a fucking power wave and shit. I can pull that shit off easily. Um, I I just like if if you want to play it like that, that's that's fine. I mean, I've I've gone to conventions where people still have like NESs and GameCube set up to where they can play Melee, which is hopefully a fucking obsolete game thanks to thanks to Ultimate. Um, well, at least Evo thinks that way. Burn! <laughs> but, uh, but I see yeah, CRT the, TVs the and really, like really, that. I'm not that fucking impressed or whatever. Um, but, yeah, but really, I, I, I just don't give a fuck. I'll play, look, I. I'll play Super Mario Brothers 3 on a PlayStation if if somebody hacked it that way. Fine. I mean, <laughs> oh fuck. Like I'm not I'm not a graphic whore. I'm not that big of a graphic whore that I would need it on a yeah. CRT TV. I really don't. Like um Look, I get it. Uh, I get it, man. When I was a kid, I used to love the shit out of video games all the time. and uh, But that was because I was a kid with more optimism than the cynical adult I am. I was totally overlooking the fact that, you know, if you made one tiny little scratch on a PlayStation 1 disc, that shit ain't, that shit's probably going to freeze up during one of the loading screens. Let's be honest with that hardware or shit like that. So, yeah. 
Magus, how do you feel? You. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh, you're gonna, you're gonna get a Magus grant probably. Here it comes. Think, well, let me let, let, let me add some fuel to the fire before you, you even answer okay. this because I know people, and this is crazy. This is bizarre to me. They won't even emulate a game to see if it's worth the hundred fifty dollars they're about to spend on it because they don't want their first experience to be emulation. They want it to be on the original hardware because they feel that's the way the game is meant to be played. That shit is bizarre to me. Now, to each their own, but I'll, I'll never understand that concept of thinking. I, I, I don't get it either, and here's the thing that these miss... I don't... Oh, fuck, I'm just going to generalize all these guys huh? Um, if I'm not careful. A lot of these guys don't understand the importance of emulation. Emulation keeps a lot of these games alive, because especially our yes. Right? Oh yes. Yeah. So let me let me go on that. Emulation is very important with a lot of preserving console games. So, for example, especially licensed stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of arcade game companies have disappeared. You can't really get them on newer consoles or whatever. So I, I think they don't understand that. As for buying like a $300 game, like I, I remember people were buying some Flintstones NES game or some shit that was like $200. Oh, that's that. It, it was more than that. You're talking about the prize at Dinosaur Peak, it peaked, no pun intended, at around $1,000. Um, it's now come back down to like 600 which is still insane. But, I heard, but see, that's the thing I don't get about collectors too. They buy these shitty games that aren't very good, but because they're rare. Yeah. So yeah. why do you think they do that? Do you think they do that to maybe hopefully turn a profit one day or to just kind of be like, Hey, look that. what I got type of deal. Oh, I, Jesus Christ, man. I think man. it's both. I think it's both because it's funny. Um, I've seen this behavior a lot more than, than I should have when I was a moderator in the happy console gaming group back in the day where I met most of you. I didn't meet you there, but. I met most of the other guys like Xander and them there. And one of the problems we had was all these people were just, look what I bought. I bought Final Fantasy 6 for yeah. yeah, it's like people just, a lot of collectors, a lot of the collectors that I've seen are just show off their collections, but they don't add any value to their posts or videos or anything like mm -hmm. that. They just show off. And Bunch of fucking dickless bastards no trying to hide their virginity. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! Oh shit! Uh, that's probably the boost talking, but I like, know. here's the thing: if I have an old school game that I picked up recently, like I said, it's co it's it's gonna get out of that case as soon as it fucking can. I'll play it. Yeah, like oh, I'm, I'm not gonna. And lie. on the other side, I found a copy of like Mike Tyson's Punch Out at a gaming store in Baton Rouge, and I was actually thinking about picking that game up. Because, you know, it's not just Punch-Out. It's the Punch-Out that can't be released anymore because it's the one with Mike Tyson in it. Yeah. But, and it wasn't even that but expensive. Let me add one thing and it had, here's the thing. It has the case and everything. It wasn't that expensive. I could actually afford it. And I just wanted to pick the damn game up because one day if I was like, oh, man, if I knew a guy who still had an NES or if I had an NES, I would play the shit out of that because it's Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but let me add something to that though. You love Punch Out. Fuck You're yeah, I do. That you like. I love the yeah, you love NES Punch, Punch Out. Out, Super Punch Out, Punch Out for the Wii. I love the shit out of those games. I want Punch Out for the Wii re-released on on the Switch so badly. But that's the difference. You're buying something that you love. You're mm -hmm. not buying... And you're going to play. Yeah, uh -huh. exactly. You're not buying Flintstones or fucking some shit like that. That's a terrible game just to have it for value. To dicks with. Yeah. You're buying because you actually enjoy it. There's a difference. Yes. And on, and on the and on the op, you know the other end of the spectrum, you have I mean there's guys I know who have I mean they're serious hardcore collectors and they have YouTube channels. You would never know what they have because they never talk yeah. about it. That's true. That uh, it's like our like our buddy um, our buddy Cyrus. Um, that dude, it's like insane how much stuff he has. Like the Turbo Graphics sixteen, he has Neo Geo AES. But he don't play the, yeah, he but he doesn't post game about game. it, and you know he's not all oh look what I got. You know he buys it because it's something that. Number one, he's at least going to play it. You know what I mean? 
So I, I think I think it's 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 a weird it's a weird conundrum because it's it's almost impossible not to generalize collectors together, but it's 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 impossible not to do it when you talk about it because there are so you don't know what people's reasons are until you actually talk to them. You know what I mean? Like, like a good example, like when you met me, Anthony, what was the yeah, first thing yeah, you yeah, said? Yeah. Like, oh, this guy's a collector. You know, I'm like, dude, I've got, I collect because I don't know. Like, I just want to play these games. Yeah. And then you're like, Oh, okay. I see. And we just I'm like, yeah. As buddies. Because at the time, like, I didn't know, I mean, I didn't know much about emulation as much as I do now. And now I'm making, you know, retro pie images for arcade punks. Like, going, you know what I mean? So, I mean, going back to, uh, to those wrestling games, I was talking about PlayStation 2. I want to pick up SmackDown's Shut Your Mouth, Here Comes the Plane, and SmackDown vs. Raw's The Original in 2006. Because I just want to go back and play those games again. Because those were fun wrestling games. And they're not going to be that fun again because I heard they really f- fucked up WWE 2K20. Really bad. It's getting They're alien. They're going to a new developer next year, though. It, yeah, but this game, it got Aliens versus, it, it got Aliens Colonial Marines publicity bad. I don't know if you've been paying attention. Ooh. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fucking terrible. Going back to what John said, though, he's absolutely right, though, because... I, I did I, I did dislike John. I just didn't trust you right away, right? But Rumble, oh, yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on. Let me finish. This. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't trust him because I've had bad experiences with collectors. But once I got to know him, he was buying stuff he generally liked. And then you really like over the years. One thing that changed most about you was you went to the emulation route and you used to kind of give collectors shit. I remember one time you did. Uh, one of my favorite videos of your on was when you did game collecting and you were just going on ROM sites downloading them. <laughs> <laughs> I tried. Yeah. I tried to game, like. This is my game hunting video. <laughs> this is the thing. I, I might. I might. I might. Uh, like ROM download all the way up to like 2D sprite era arcade games and maybe some stuff earlier like your Neo Geos, your your, your Super NES and stuff. But when it comes to the PlayStation, PlayStation 2 era, I kind of avoid because those emulations just look pretty shoddily built from what I've seen. I'm like, at that point... Has that gotten better, John? Yeah, actually, I just sold every single PS2 game I own and my PS2 in order to get that 3DO because I have... I can emulate... Let me see what the emulator... Okay, to be fair, in my... In, oh, shit. Wow. Okay. See what I mean? He sounds like a monster belching. Well, let me ask you... I'll answer about that PS2 question you asked. So, PS2 emulation, I actually just sold my entire PS2 collection and the console because I can emulate PS2 at, like, four times the native res on my laptop. Now, granted, I have a $900 gaming laptop, so not everyone can do that. So, unless you're, you know, running a pretty hefty pc pc ps2 emulation is still pretty difficult so i'm using pcx2 is what i'm using so that's a pretty good emulator then yeah it's the one i've had the most success with and i've been able to pretty much run anything through it okay so what is your what are your thoughts on here's the thing we mostly, you and I mostly play games digitally as we established before. I've bought a lot of games digitally yeah. on PlayStation 4 for the past couple of years, especially on the Switch. Um, I don't like to own physical copies because it just takes up shelf space. And when you buy it on a PlayStation 4, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. It really doesn't. I mean, for, for Nintendo Switch and PSVR, I can understand. It actually saves up a lot more memory space. But I like to buy the digital games out of, out of the convenience. But I've always heard some people, not just retro scalpers, but even some of my own friends go, oh, you buy that game digitally? And technically, you don't own it. And, 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 and. What are your thoughts on that? When people say you don't, you don't own it if you have the you don't own it if you have the disc. What happens if you need a new PS2? That game, like the entire games or a new PS4. Well, and the PS the, the PSN now sort of shut down. You still don't own okay, so hypothetically, let's say in fifteen years, 
you know, the, the, the PSN store is gone. Okay. Well, you have a library full of games and say your, say your PS4 breaks, but you need to go run out and, you know, get a new PS4, get a used PS4 because yours doesn't work anymore. You put that game in your new PS4, you're not playing the full game. So, you know, and a lot of them require downloads even to play. So do you even really own the game? That's a good point. You know, of course, there's some instances, yeah, smaller games, like, yeah, the whole game might be on there, but, you know, we're getting to the point where, well, you know, if you were smart enough, you back that more, shit up on an SSD. Yeah. Oh, hold on real quick, though. To John's point, though, remember the whole Tales fiasco about two months ago, John? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's a prime example of that, right? Yeah. There's been, I mean, and you have um, uh, Scott Pilgrim. Pilgrim. That's yeah. another one. But that's what, two games in what, 13 years? Yeah. That that's happened? I mean, now you got some shitty situations where Nintendo, you know, didn't didn't allow you to transfer your Wii Shop games over. That was pretty shitty. You know, it would be nice if they could have made that as those all transfer over instead of having to rebuy them. I to agree. be fair, where the fuck can you find a physical copy of Scott Pilgrim vs. the World? I rest my well, case. The, the, the point, you, well, they, they, you're, 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 I believe your question was, do you own the game if you have the physical? I think that was your question, right? Well, like any access to the game so I can fucking play it. I mean, Jesus Christ, like I said, I don't care how I play it as long as I play it. Yeah. Emulation, digitally, yeah, I mean, physically, maybe. Um, but like I said, there's no, unless you're limited run games, in which case those guys are just fuckers who are trying to encourage scalpers in the first place, anyways. Hence why they called themselves limited runs. If they really, yeah. had, if they really had a heart of gold, those fucking physical copies wouldn't be so limited. In in our Facebook chat, limited run games is a very popular subject, huh, John. Not well, it's, them it's, themselves, but the topic is. <laughs> it's yeah, no, it's bullshit because you have. Um, yeah. What is that um, overseas website you have? I forget the name of it. Play Asia? Physical reasons. Play Asia, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, Play Asia. It's, I mean, that's a per- prime example of how you know what limited run doing is bullshit. I decided to chat with a friend of mine, an IRL friend of mine, who's been an avid PC gamer for over a decade. I'm going to say 15, maybe 20 years. Um but he has he 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 was a physical console gamer. But here's the thing: he quit since the Xbox PS2 era. So any generation after that, I think he jumped the PC. So I decided to ask him the question, and we have a long conversation going on as we were recording. But he says, "Um, well, yeah, they can revoke your fucking account if you, if you were buying off of Steam or whatever or EA or whatever, but." He's he's comfortable owning over twelve hundred fucking games on Steam, and he says Jeez. he says to people he and I asked him what do, what do you think about the people who says you don't really own the game? He says, well, as for those people, they aren't seeing one very important factor: the fact that vast majority of games nowadays, especially PC games, especially on the Steam library, aren't available as physical releases. So it's either that or nothing. You'd be cutting yourself off from a huge selection of games if you only want physical that or pirate it emulation is necessary for preservation sake like what magus has said old games rely on that old hardware to stop working eventually that is true i have a feeling my playstation 2 at least the disc um the disc tray feels like it's going out because i i haven't booted that thing up in years so i decided when i booted up rumble roses and tried to open the disc tray it was only half open then closed and i had to kind of semi force it open to put the disc in and the game was working fine and shit but it made me think oh man that thing is gonna die soon it's gonna be a little sad but so if you don't want those old games to eventually disappear uh, forever emulation is necessary emulation is great for preservation but what happens if the internet dies and my thought is well then the apocalypse starts because that's what's going to happen I'm just saying. <laughs> you know, if it's, the, it's funny. If the it's internet dies, then yeah, yeah. the apocalypse. Okay, so is, yeah, exactly. Who gives a shit about video yeah, games at this point? Yeah. We're all gonna die. You're, exa- you're, ex- 
you're exactly right. And I always love that argument. Like, well, what happens if the internet goes down? I'm thinking, well, if the internet goes down, the emulation is literally going to be the last of your worries at that point. Like video games <laughs> is going to be the last thing on your mind. Think about that. If the internet goes down, like, bro, really? That's your argument? If the internet goes down, banks will shut down. People won't be able to go to work. The economy will come to a screeching halt. Yeah. No one's going to give a shit about you being able to play, download a copy of Super Mario 3. You know what yeah. I'll be collecting in the apocalypse? Fucking canned booze, motherfucker. Yeah, and to be fair, you know, emulation some games, um, you can emulate games from old companies, and those companies are fucking dead. Like, yeah. The only reason why you probably can't emulate games from Nintendo is because Nintendo's still alive and kicking harder than ever. But uh, what's what's a good company I could bring up that's fucking, you know, that used to be great at its prime, but it's dead nowadays? Kato. Kato, yeah, Kato. exactly. Those guys. Kato. Yeah, Kato. So who are you stealing okay, from when so you let's... emulate? Yeah, that's a good point. So real quick, let's go on to another subject that's related to this. Scalpers. Oh, God, fuck those guys. John, what's, what do you think of the scalping um so the reason why i, see, I by the way i turned that mic off so you, you, we won't have that issue anymore uh, the reason why scalpers exist is because people pay what the scalpers are asking uh if if some people just would can have some self-control when it comes to certain things scalpers wouldn't scalpers wouldn't be there Sc scalpers are simply filling a need unfortunately gotcha. Um, so let me ask you this. Do you think most people on eBay are scalpers? Well, there's a difference between a, re a scalper and a reseller. Okay. All right. What's so a, re a scalper is somebody, well, a reseller is just somebody who buy lows and sell. And, and okay. So for example, me buying something at a discount and reselling it, I'm not scalping it. Would you guys agree? All yeah. right. Yeah. So a scalper is somebody who will buy something at full retail price and then artificially inflates, and then artificially then increase the price due to artificial inflation. So for example, toy companies, this shit happens a lot all the time with toys. They did it with Danny S mini. They knew there was going to be a small supply. So people bought these sometimes three, four or five at a time at the full retail price and then sold them beyond the actual MSRP. That's scalping, but say, but say I find an NES mini at, you know, 30 bucks mm. and then I sell it for, you know, 50 or 60. That's not scalping. That's reselling. Gotcha. That if, makes sense. Okay. I have a story to tell. Um, I was at a retro gaming store several years ago and we saw the games for display and all that shit. And my friend asked curiously how much his, like, Lunar uh, PlayStation 1 collection was. Out of curiosity, he had no interest in selling it. In fact, somebody said, somebody asked, oh, are you interested in selling that game to us? And I swear to God, I think he was about to reach to his, reach to his fucking combat knife and stab him in the throat right there if he fucking heard that question. Because he loves that and, game. And those Lunar games fetch a lot of fucking money, huh? Those are, well, justifiably, those are fucking wonderful fucking package collections thanks to working designs, thanks uh, as we got into it in one of our earlier episodes. But, um... Yeah, go see that episode. But the working like, designs episode. Like we were browsing through the store and the most expensive thing that was at the retro gaming store was a Super NES copy and it was just the Super NES. No box, no manual, nothing. It was of Ninja Warriors and it was like fucking 130 something dollars. Ninja Warriors isn't that common? I I don't fucking know. The guy could be lying John, to us. John, is that us. common? Ninja, Ninja Warriors. Warriors on what? I'm not familiar with Super that Super NES title Super game. Nintendo, it was a yeah. side-scroller, kind of like a side-scroller... I want to call it a shooter or whatever. You play as a ninja, you shoot stars and whatever. I just remember the arcade game. Yeah, I thought you played Ninja Warriors, but maybe you didn't. I'll look it up right now, actually. Um... 
but yeah, see how much it goes for. I don't, I don't. I'm not familiar with the but game like, as far as like price goes. We were we we saw the price and we both almost shat like fucking enough bricks to fucking build a wall to cover that cover the entrance gate because like everything else and they had consoles of like a Sega Saturn and a PlayStation all that shit for less than that like I I believe a Sega Saturn was like seventy five dollars yeah. or something and we're like so the Super Nintendo go ahead. No, you go ahead. The Super Nintendo goes right now. The Super Nintendo Ninja Warriors loose goes for ninety three dollars average. Jesus. Complete in box goes for three eighty two. I'm curious. I wonder if that's like a late release that didn't get too many releases or something. I'm looking at Holy Amazon shit. right now. They're like selling it for thirty and forty fucking dollars. Jeez, it's probably a reproduction. Still, man. No, oh yeah. No game is, dude. There are modern games nowadays that barely justify its fucking sixty-five dollar price tag. No retro game is going to be I'll, I'll, worth that much, ever. It's not about it's. It's not. Yeah, these are these are reproductions, but it's not about how good. See, one thing I've come to realize when it comes to buying retro games is it's not about. See, because the problem is a lot of the majority of the collectors don't play the game. Don't they? Don't buy these games. <laughs> the of, NES they're gonna play them. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Allergies. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> but that like, guy. you're buying these games to simply say I have them or I want to complete a collection. So when you have that sort of people buying a game for those reasons, you know, it's just the value is just made up at that point. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, it's not based on how good the game is, but because we're still in a, like when you look at a modern market, PS3, even, Xbox 360, PS4, even, that stuff is based on how good the game is, you know? No, man, even, let me ask you a question. No, here's the thing. Even the best, 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 best games aren't even going to be worth over a hundred dollars. I'm sorry. Super Mario brothers three is a fucking classic, but it's not going to be worth $150. Okay, it will never be worth about, that much. Like, but but, but what something but what something is worth is what the the, the market determines. Though, <sighs> see, because that's all subjective. And look, I totally agree with you. Like me personally, it's not worth that much. But it's it's subjective, and it's at the mercy of what the market says it's worth. That's the unfortunate part about collecting. Man, that shit yeah. like this that makes me want makes me fucking hate capitalism. Makes me want to turn communist like these stupid SJWs. <laughs> Because that is some dumb shit right there. <laughs> oh, oh, one thing, I think this will be a good question to close the show off. I remember about 2003, 2004, I would see copies of Final Fantasy VII. And at the time, I thought, oh, because it's Final Fantasy VII, it's worth this much. But I saw copies of Final Fantasy VII going for $70, $80, $90. And that game is actually common. Oh, yeah, it's not worth that much anymore. It's a $15 game. It should yeah. have never been worth that much. But what's ironic is because, like some of these other games, like Medieval, mm -hmm. Medieval is one. Uh, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, the green label is going for fifty bucks. But because these games are, see, what happened is like you have a game like Medieval. It wasn't a big, it wasn't a popular game when it came out. So people are people are now buying that game probably to actually just they actually do want to play it. So now the price has gone up. I mean, Medieval is. A really fucking basic game, and they ever you had the re-release now. I'm actually curious if it's gone down now because of that. But yeah, I, PS I PS One is a weird market right now, man. Because you got shit like like it's stuff like I don't understand why disc based games will ever be worth anything. I mean, it's literally just a fucking piece of plastic with a digital imprint. That's all it is. Yeah, um, I mean, these I games are digital me. regardless. The only ones I kind of get, and I kind of, that's the key word, kind of, are those working design games that we mentioned, John, like the Lunars. Because you know about the packaging with all that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The like, Lunar's not even worth all that much, actually. How much is it? I, Lunar's I, I, like a $40 game. Dude, I paid 90 bucks for it about seven years ago. Because <sighs> yeah. I wanted it. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, I was, because that was the only way I could play that, play that version of the game. Yeah, I mean, if Pop but it's Full... a forty dollar game, really? Wow! Like that. Okay, so Pop Full Mail. That like like we're talking Lunar what Silver Story complete? 
Yeah, not Sega CD version. Yeah, PlayStation version, and we're talking it comes with everything, with all the bonus content it came with, because I, cause my friend has copies of Lunar, and I know those fucking CD cases were fucking f- dummy thick when that came with a boatload of content. Uh, you saying that's only 40 fucking dollars? Get the fuck out of here. Meanwhile, Ninja Warriors was sold at some retro gaming store for $138. <laughs> Jesus. Okay, so real Christ. quick. Just to, From a company that's we'll dead. Close... Yeah. We'll probably have to close the show here, but I think this is a good question. What is the most ridiculous thing you have ever seen from the collector's market? And I'll start with John. because Yeah. And I, you always have the best stories. I actually, I actually mentioned it. And okay. it was, um, I was listening to, oh, and, and, and real quick before, um, I just want to go, just go back real quick. Cause there was something I wanted to mention when I was turning into a satanic robot on the show. Uh, when you oh. go back, when we talk about digital, digital versus physical, um, one thing I just wanted to add real quick before I, before I give you my answer is when it comes to that, what I think a lot of people also fail to realize is a lot of these indie developers, they only go to digital because they can't afford to put out physical releases of their games. That's true. So I've seen, I've seen people say, Oh, that indie game looks cool, but is there a physical like motherfucker? If you want to support the, the developer and you want to get a physical one day, maybe you should spend the nine 99 to play it digitally and enjoy the fucking game. How long did yeah. it take a while for like Shovel Knight to get a physical release? Remember? And that game's super fucking popular. I don't know how long it took. Maybe I honestly don't know how long it took. I mean, but it, I mean, originally that was yeah, digital I mean, only. Ten dollars. Yeah. That's I, I've spent drinking money that was more expensive than that. So, oh, I, dude, I, yeah, I've I've spent I've I've spent that on more. I've spent more than that on a drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? so so yeah, I feel you. Yeah, exactly. Like, I mean, shit. If mo if if, if video games were priced at forty dollars, I'd be fucking splurging all over the place. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but uh, digitally, physically, whatever. But uh, shit. Maybe that's why I have such a huge Vita library because all those games were forty dollars by default. That's probably why I have all those goddamn Neptunia games. Um. <laughs> What, what what's the most what is the most ridiculous you, yeah. you mentioned it earlier john so the most ridiculous man um two things okay. one one so i i think there's when it comes to emulation i think there's a lot of there's a lot of pushback from collectors because they don't quite understand it um i think a lot of people still have the view of well they can you know, collect mouse these and keyboard, nuts and you know. they can collect these nuts in their mouths <laughs> It's just saying <laughs> these nuts. <laughs> um, <laughs> fucking dark. I love when you're drunk. <laughs> but yeah, man, like um then I you think should it's, see I my streams more I often. Heard, I heard somebody say that they won't play a game on emulation. And it was a podcast I was listening to, and this person said they really wanted a game because they really wanted to they really wanted to experience and play that game. And the guy's like, well, why don't you just emulate it? He goes, no, he goes, you know, I'm not going to do that because it's not the original way to play the game, you know? So I'm just going to wait till I have the $150 saved up so I can experience the game or whatever. Fuck off. And like that shit like blew my mind that this person just refused to emulate because for for no good reason other than that's probably because he's afraid that he's gonna be and it was like a fucking it was like a turbo graphic 16 game which is insanely easy to emulate on just about anything he's probably afraid yeah. he's probably afraid. i mean i have that on my psp he's probably afraid of facing eternal damnation or something for fucking piracy i don't know <laughs> i just <sighs> i don't think people People actually believe that when they say that, man. That selective morality of like they won't emulate because it's stealing. Like, give me a fucking break. You never downloaded a, a, a an, an MP3. You know, bullshit, dude. You never you never copied music off YouTube. Give me a like, give me a break, man. You can't. This selective morality when it comes to that shit is just a total cop out. I'm I'm gonna make a very controversial joke. You break into Pete Doerr's fucking room, <laughs> and and then you see in the corner that Raspberry Pi. Oh no. Oh, <laughs> well, I I went there. Well, I already answered my question, and that was the fucking Ninja Warriors game I saw at that retro gaming store. 
hundred fucking fifty yeah. thirty eight fifty. It was the most expensive thing in the store, and there was like Sega Saturn games and shit. I thought, well, Sega Saturn's a much rarer console with rarer games. Shouldn't they be higher in price? I mean, what the fuck? For me, it's quite simple. Last year, I was at a retro gaming store, right? Right. Last fall, September two thousand eighteen. I saw Chrono Trigger selling for $600. Fucking Chrono Trigger. There's no way. I mean, for a while, that game was rare, but not anymore. Hmm. $600. Yeah, you could play Chrono Trigger anyway. And isn't there versions that are better than the Super NES version out there? Like The DS version, and and they really fixed up the iPad version, which I've been playing, so. Yeah, I was... <sighs> I know the RPGs aren't your thing, but even you know that Chrono Trigger shouldn't be as high as it should be, right, John? Fuck no. Nah, man. No. But again, you know, value is subjective, it's, you know? Yeah. When a video game is yeah. more expensive than a console, that's, that's just too much, man. Yeah. It's like $600. Oh, so I, I, this... I, I could just buy a, a fucking Xbox One if I wanted to. I know this was supposed to be my last question, but I'm curious. Those 3DO games, they're not too high, are they? Some, I mean, some of them are, some of them are ridiculous. Like I wanted a copy of, um, I was, I was looking for the, uh, the game called crash and burn. It was a racing game that was launched with a console. Ironically, the fucking 3DO launched with a game that pretty much described its lifespan crash and burn. Um, (laughs) I find that to be hilarious actually. Uh, it looked like a good game, so I looked it up on eBay, and the disc is like the disc is like twenty bucks, no big deal. But the actual long box, if you get the long box, the full complete, it goes for like a thousand dollars because it's, apparently it's like insanely rare. Jesus. And I was like, that's, I guess I won't be buying that copy. Oh, I got <laughs> like, I got one question. I mean, I they range from like ten to sixty to one hundred fifty, depending on you know. Well, I got- if you just buy the disc, the discs are cheap. I and got- real quick before Dark Stream goes in. What games do you own for it? I'm just curious. Because I owned the 3D as a kid. I, you, you knew. You, I, everyone knows that. So. Um, hold on. I'll tell you in a second. Well, here's my question. Why the fuck the 3DO? It's not, it wasn't a very popular console at the time. It still isn't. That's there my question. There was stuff about it, though. The, the library is actually not bad, man. It's actually got a pretty decent library. Uh, there was, there's, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of old PC games, too, on the 3DO. Huh. that were never put on the console. Like, for example, there's this game I loved as a kid. It was called Mega Race. Um, it was oh, like an okay dude. racing game. I used to own Mega That's Race. That's on the on 3DO, my, man. I used to own Mega Race when I had a piece on my first PC. It had that fucking yep, weird it's on the host, 3DO, dude. Man. Oh, yep, wow. Yep. It was like a game show. Yep. That game was awesome, dude. And uh, I remember trying to find it on PC and it doesn't work on like DOSBox or anything. So I was like, whatever. And then I found out it was on the 3DL. I'm like, holy shit. Yeah. You know? um, so there's a lot of that. There's a lot of PC games that were ported to 3DO, like the Gex. Uh, the best version of Gex is on 3DO. The best version of uh, Road Rash is on 3DO. There's a Street Fighter game that's. Probably one of the best ports is on the 3DO. It's got an awesome remix that's only on that version of the soundtrack. The problem with the 3DO was $700 when it came out, which yeah. if you factor inflation today, that's the equivalent of a console coming out and being like $1,200. You know what was also traced for that console too was its port of a Samurai Showdown. Yeah. Yeah. What? Which was, you know, ironic because, you know, you have to play close as much to get the AES version anyway, so. <laughs> but now the 3DO, to answer your question, Dark Scream, it was just something that I always kind of wanted to play. Um, I liked the library. I looked at it. Uh, and it's not something that's very fun to emulate. So I was like, you know what? Why not? If I'm going to have some, if I'm going to like have if I'm going to have physical of old games, it might as be, it might as well be something that's like a good talking piece. You know, you know what I mean? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. But don't get me wrong. I'm not like going out tomorrow and I'm looking for mid copies of long box games just so I could say I have them. <laughs> you you want to play it though. That's the thing. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 
Yeah, man, play the yeah, shit so, out. Play the shit out of those. Yeah, games, like I'm not man. buying any. I, like I hate FMV games. There's a lot of FMV games on there that I'm not even gonna mess with because I I don't like them. I don't like FMV games. My but, recommendation to you, my friend, is still Shockwave. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I think I was looking that up. I was looking that up the other day. Yeah, Shockwave's pretty fun. It was back then. Man, playing them old school I games like well Bushido Blade, that demo of that Macross game we never fucking got because Harmony Gold's a bunch of bitch asses. Man, that's... What? <laughs> that, yeah, what, yeah, you didn't know. We were we were about to get a Macross game on PlayStation 1, but we never got it, even though they had a demo available oh. for it, plus a magazine ad, which I've bared witness to both of. But, you know. Okay. Oh, I remember that ad. Yeah, Matt Cross, I believe it was called like VFX Missions 2 or something like that. But yeah, gotcha. man, love playing them retro games. And I fucking love that PlayStation 1 jingle. I'll do anything to hear that so, all the time. Which is why that, oh, yeah. that used to be my PlayStation 4 theme for a while. <laughs> I, I, I think in conclusion, it's safe to say that we all have a, a similar opinion. Wouldn't you guys agree? In a way, yeah. 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 So, in closing, for John, I want because Dark Stream, you got everyone who listens to this knows about mine and Dark Stream's channels, obviously. John, tell tell everyone on this show about your channel. Yeah. So my channel is the Retro Bro. Um, you'll see me up if you search for me on YouTube. I'll probably be the first thing that comes up. Uh, you'll see me on a side shot with the Retro Bro logo in the background. So my channel, my channel is. I try to be consistent with uploads. I'm probably minimum two to three videos a week. I, I, I do a lot of emulation based topics. I talk about, uh, like, for example, I got a video coming up. I'm going to be talking about the poly mega. Uh, I just did a video about in a main arcade cabinet that I built and kind of where to get started. If you're going to build your own, I've done videos of where I talk about, how to do certain things on retro pie. So some good how to videos. In fact, the how to videos I have are probably my most popular videos. Um, how to, how, you know, pretty much I have one from, you know, how to get Sega, Sat Sega CD working on your retro pie, how to get MAME working, how to do certain things, um, all the way from how to build your own from the beginning to the end. Uh, every now and then I'll touch on some like hot gaming topics only if it interests me. Like for example, I'm not gonna even touch the whole COPPA thing because I don't. I honestly just don't care. I don't want to talk about it. Me it's neither. not something I watch. Therefore, it's not. Yeah, therefore What's it's not gonna be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a whole. I'll, I'll tell you what it is when we get off. Here. Yeah. Okay. Um. But. Yeah, because we can go. We can go on a whole other hour and a half about that bullshit. Okay. What's, but what's... it's not something I watch, so I'm not gonna put it on there. You know what I mean? All right. But you did do a video on Death Stranding, though. No, I did not. No, because I get two totally fucks about Death Stranding. On? Did you do a video on Shenmue? Oh, Shenmue. Shenmue 3 is what you did a video on. I did. I did, because I, I like Shenmue. Yeah, I mixed yeah. that up. All yeah, right. I, I think like I've... Shenmue. Yeah, you know, I played then, one if you wanted to. Then I think I found your channel. Are you some fucking ripped dude with, with sleeveless shirts? And yeah, yeah that's is your, is your, <laughs> I'm not that ripped right now, though. Is your icon basically the Broforce logo? Yes. All right. Yes, I got your URL so I can post yeah, it in the channel below. That's me. <laughs> that is me. All right. So I think that's everything. We've gone over time, but fuck, it was worth it. Um, so well, it's our first guest. It's a special occasion, right? True. Plus, I'm hammered all the time, so I got a lot of opinions. Yes, you share. are very hammered. That's been amusing, too. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. Post a like if you want to see me drunk all the time. I'll be like Scott Hall in WCW. <laughs> oh, fuck. Too soon? Too soon? <laughs> no, not too soon. <laughs> Nothing's too soon for me. Even John knows that, right? Me and Jason. No, no. Okay. It's too soon. <laughs> so, with that, everyone, this is Dark Scream signing out. Yeah, and I won't burp, so it'll be with that, guys. Magus out. And, and the Retro Bro. Thanks for having me on, guys. No problem. We'll we'll do it again if you if you're down. Take anytime, anytime I get an invite, I'll be here. Take care, everybody. 